In this video, I'll give you an overview of how the different tables and plots in case number five, exploring data, how they were generated. And so the tool used to generate these plots and tables is called Radiant, which is actually a, uh, a tool written in the programming language R. And R is one of the most powerful tools available today for data science and business analytics. So uh, you're going to actually be installing R, R Studio and Radiant on your laptops for classes. Uh, but what we're going to do for now is just use the, um, the version that's installed on a server. Okay? So if we're in this section, Introduction to Radiant, you'll see that there's a link here. Let's open up the server version of Radiant. And again, we'll talk about installing Radiant on your laptop in a little bit. So it takes a second to, to load. There we go. So by default, when you open up Radiant, you'll see some information on diamonds. So this is the price of a diamond, the carrot of the diamond, and so on. This is an example data set that loads automatically. That's not the data set we want, though. So let's go back to case number five. And here it says the data are available. So this is data from IceKimo, the uh, shaved ice shop. And let's click on that. And so the way my browser is set up is when I click on a link like this, it'll ask me where I want to save the file. And so the file here is called sales2015.rds, and .rds is a binary data format used by R. So I'm going to just save that to my desktop. It's very well possible that your uh, web browser will just save this file directly to your downloads folder. Either one of those is fine. We just need to go find it. All right. So now we're back to Radiant. Let's load up that data set. And so we're in the Data and Manage tab. Let's click on Browse. And it opens up in my desktop. Here's the sales data. Let's go ahead and click Open. And there's the data. So what is it, what are we seeing on the screen? This is just a data preview. It shows me 10 out of the 365 rows, just so I get a, an initial feel for the data. And it also adds some information here about the uh, different variables in your data set. Now, it's a very common problem, actually, in practice, that you just forget on what the different data represents, how it was defined, and so on, unless you make very good notes on exactly how everything is created and defined. And so uh, these uh, binary data format, uh, RDS, that I showed you before, it allows you to add descriptions of the data set that you have uh, so that when you load it up, you'll actually see what the data set is really about. OK, so what's the first thing we're going to try to do with this data? Let's go back to case number five in the, uh, in the bootcamp. Let's scroll up. So the first thing was this interactive data table. So it's only showing 10 rows at a time, uh, but we can kind of page through that data set how we want. Uh, we can sort the data uh, by date in ascending or descending order. Uh, we can choose to only look at the cloudy days or to only look at the sunny days. And how do I know that this is only the sunny days? Well, of course, I can sort, and I'll see that only sunny is actually shown. And you also see down here, out of the 365 days that we started out with, now it's only showing 242 days. If I don't want it sorted, uh, sorry, selected or filtered for uh, sunny days, I just click on that little X here, and now we're back to 365. So how would you generate an interactive table like that? So in Radiant, it's quite straightforward. We've already loaded our data. Now go to the Data and View tab. And right here is now our interactive table. Right? It's that simple. Once you've loaded the data, there's your interactive table. So again, I can sort by date. I can sort on uh, the month in ascending or descending order. And then if I want to sort within, let's say, uh, the month on temperature, I can do that too. So I've now, I'm now holding down the Shift key and then clicking on the header above temperature, and it'll alternate between ascending, descending, or no sorting on that variable. Okay, so that can be quite convenient. Again, I can do filtering. So if I only want to show you know, those days that were above a certain temperature, I can do that. I'm going to go back to the original. There we go. Um, let me just do a couple of things just to show you one other feature. So I'm just filtered on a bunch of things, and there's only 17 out of the 365 rows shown now. Uh, I've sorted by date. Suppose I want to just get back to the original uh, data set, the original table. Well, there's this uh, option here to clear settings, so let's click on that. And now we're back to the original data as we loaded it in. Okay, so that's step one. Let's create a, an interactive table that allows us to play around with our data, to step through it, and so on. Okay, now back to 
the case, case number five, let's do a plot of our data. So this is a, a plot of uh, counts or frequencies of the number of cloudy days and the number of sunny days. How would we generate a plot like that given the available data? Okay. So here's that variable, sunny. It has two levels. It has cloudy or sunny. Now we want to make a plot out of that. We can do that in data and visualize. Uh, this is going to be labeled as a distribution plot, which basically will either generate a histogram, which we talked about in a previous case, for a numeric variable. So for example, if I click on sales, that's a histogram of the sales data. But if I choose sunny, which is a categorical variable, only takes on two levels, in R that's called a factor, okay? And I wanna generate a plot for that, say, well, you know, it's not a numerical variable, so I can't really create a histogram, but what I'll give you instead is a bar chart that shows me the number of cloudy days and the number of sunny days, right? Which is the same plot that you showed in, that you saw in the case. So that was pretty straightforward. Um, and below that, graph, we saw a table with the actual number, right? So the plot is good. It gives us an idea that there are many more sunny days than cloudy days. But if you want something more specific, so how exactly how many cloudy days and sunny days are there out of the 365, we need a table, right? We need to summarize the data down and kind of count how many sunny or cloudy days there were. So that's like a pivot table. So we can create that in the pivot tab in Radiant. We're going to select our categorical variable, which was sunny and then click on the Create Pivot Table button, and there is our table. So 365 total, uh, cloudy, 123, sunny, uh, 242. Now, since this type of table is pretty common and it's quite likely you're gonna to wanna to create a table out of that, there's also an option to generate a plot here. So let's click on Show Plot. And here's the same bar chart or, or distribution chart that we've seen before. Okay. On to the next one, which is a scatter plot. And so what does the scatter plot do? It'll show me, and for this data, for every single day, what the sales level is. It's a little small here. So this is the date on the horizontal axis. You'll see that changes over time across the different months. And over here we have sales. Um, and so each single point represents the sales on that particular day. So this little dot down here is the sales level on January 1st, 2015. And over here is the sales level on December 31st, 2015. Okay, and everything else in between. So how would you make a gener generate a scatter plot like this? Well, it's uh, go back to the data visualize tab. It's not a distribution plot, it is a scatter plot. So from the drop down, select scatter. Uh, we want sales and we want date. So select date, select sales. Make sure you have scatter selected. And here's our scatter plot. Okay. It's not quite as wide as the one in the case, but other than that, of course, it's the exact same plot. So um, what I can see in this plot is that sales are actually a bit lower at the very beginning of the year, so in early January. And kind of mid, late December, they're also a bit lower. Whereas in this area, they seem to be a bit higher. Now, there's obviously a lot of variation, so that makes it a little hard to see the relationship. But one thing we could do is see, you know, can we see kind of a trend in this or not? And it would be nice to be able to fit a, fit a line through this, through this uh, cloud of points. Now, that's pretty straightforward to do by just clicking on Line and then updating the plot. So this is a line that shows me what the relationship is between uh, the time of the year and sales. And you can probably see that this is not a great fit. Right? Again, there's a huge amount of variation around that line. But as we said, it looks like January is a bit lower and December is a bit lower. So maybe trying to force a linear relationship between date and sales isn't a great idea. So is there some other thing that we could do? And there is. We can add another type of curve, which is called a loose curve. Just uncheck the line, click Update Plot. So what this shows me is a nonlinear curve that's try, that it tries to fit as best it can through the scatter plot. Again, there's still lots of variation around this, but this seems to be a much better fit already than that, that linear uh, line that we had before. Okay. 
So we'll talk more about this in detail in, in your different classes. How can we fit these types of curves, either the linear or the nonlinear version, so that we can describe our data, the relationship between different variables, as best as possible. All right, so that was our first scatter plot. The next chart that we showed is a bar chart. So in the bar chart, we're showing the different months of the year. So the variable is month. And on the vertical axis here, we've got sales, and it's specifically the mean of sales in each month. So this is the mean sales in January, February, March, and so on. So let's create a bar plot just like that. Uh, so first, so we're back in Radiant now, data visualize again. Let's choose a uh, bar chart of sales versus month. Let's update our plot. And so here's the same plot again. I'm going to make this a little wider because the labels are a little munched, scrunched. There's actually a lot of options that you can choose within the uh, Data Visualize tab. So I've actually got some, some uh, checkboxes here that will allow you to collapse or expand different parts of the options. So the main, main section is, of course, most important, selecting variables and the type of plot. But if you want to style the plot, and I just unchecked the main checkbox here, style, we can see that there's down here an option to make the plot a little wider, right? Or higher if you want. So instead of 650, I'm going to choose 900. Let's see if that fits a little better. Okay, that looks a lot better. So again, what we'll see here is the, the mean or the average sales in January, February, March, and so on. And this is a similar representation to, to the uh, scatter plot that we saw before. At the beginning of the year and at the end of the year, on average, sales seem to be a little uh, lower, whereas kind of in the July, August, September range, that's when sales seem to be highest. Now, one thing that's a little uh, problematic with these bar charts is that you might be given the impression by looking at this, that there's really not a lot of variation around sales. In fact, there's no information in this plot about variation at all. So looking at this, you might say, well, you know, it looks like sales in August are highest. And without any extra inf information, you might conclude that you know, sales in August are always higher, higher than sales in July. We've already seen the scatter plot, so we know that that's not very likely to be true. So there's actually a version of this chart uh, that we can kind of transform or add some information about the variability around this average. In fact, what we can do, I'm just going to close style because style is fine for now. I'm just going to convert this into a scatter plot okay, and then hit update plot. So what is this? This actually shows the same pattern as that bar chart. We're looking at the average sales in each month. But in addition, now we've got the scatter plot information. So within January, each of these dots represents a sale um, in, in a sales level that was observed in the January month, February, March, and so on. Okay. Now we can still see that the average or the mean sales in August is higher than it was in July. But we can also see that there is a lot of variation around this. And there are some uh, days here where, where the sales in August, for example, were a lot lower than some of the best sales days in July. And right? so this graph right here is actually much, much more informative than the bar chart that I showed you previously. All right. So that was actually the next plot. So I've already shown you this, how to generate a scatter plot like this, where we've got a categorical variable like month. Right? Month only has 12 different values, so it's not a numeric variable. It's categorical or, in our terminology, a factor. How would you generate a plot like that? And then the last plot I'm going to show you is a link between temperature and sales. But we're again looking at a shaved ice shop. So you can imagine that there might be some link between temperature and sales over time. So how would we generate a plot like that? It's pretty straightforward. It's another scatter plot. Oh, we've got sales, but now instead of month, we're going to use, where is it? Um, we're going to use, sorry, it's, we're going to use temperature, sorry, instead of month. There we go. Update the plot. And so here's our scatter plot. It doesn't have the same line that we saw previously in our, uh, in case number five. So let's go ahead and add that by clicking on this checkbox here, updating the plot, and there we go. So what does this look like? This looks like there is a positive relationship between temperature and sales, which is pretty intuitive, I'd say. Right? Generally, you'll, you'll sell more ice cream or shaved ice when temperatures are higher than rather than when they're lower. Now, obviously, this is not a perfect uh, relationship. There's, it's not a perfect prediction that we're able to generate from temperature. 
but we would be interested to see on average, what would we expect sales to increase by as temperature increases by one or by 10? And how do we know that? We can try and estimate the slope of this particular line. And the tool we use for that is called linear regression, which is something that you'll uh, hear a lot more about in your, in your classes. Okay, so I hope this gives you a bit of a better idea of how, how the different plots and tables that you see in case number five were generated. As I said, when you're using this tool in your classes, you'll actually have it running on your laptop. So there is some information here on how you can install R, R Studio and Radiant. So these are this is kind of a combination of tools. You'll be using Radiant, but to be able to use it effectively, you need these tools as well. And so if you're on Windows, the easiest way to do that is to download this all-in-one installer. So you just click on this link, it'll download a file, double click that, and it'll start up the installation process. So just follow along with that. There's detailed install instructions here. And if you run into any problems, there's a link to the Piazza site down here as well. And there are several parts throughout the bootcamp. You can click on that and give us as much information as you can about why you got stuck, what happened, any messages you see, any errors you see, and we'll be very happy to help you out and get that set up. Okay, but you have to have that installed uh, before the start of fall classes. We'll, we'll provide you with additional reminders later on. If you're on a Mac, the installation process is a little bit different. So you'll again want to go uh, and check out the detailed install instructions. Basically what you have to do on a Mac is download and install R and then copy and paste this full command into, uh, into R, right? So you download R, you install it, you copy and paste this command into R, press enter, and then it'll take care of the rest of the install for you. Again, if you get stuck on anything or, or have any questions, just go to the Piazza site and let us know what's going on, right? And again, we're happy to, to help you out. Now, once you've installed Radiant, I want you to try and start it up. This happens through RStudio. So you start up RStudio, there's a little add-ins button at the top, you click on that and it'll fire up Radiant. And so if that all works and you see this diamond data set, the one that we saw a little bit earlier as well, you can run that from your laptop, you're all set and you're done with case five. And you can click on yes and hit submit and you're all set.